Deepak, thanks very much for joining me. Now, as if you weren't busy enough being Managing Director of MSD in the UK, you've taken on the role of President of the ABPI. What inspired you to get involved? Well, Paul, thank you for taking the time. You know, this is a, a great honor for me to be elected by my peers to be the president of the ABPI. I've been in this industry for 24 years, and I really believe in what the industry stands for, which is ultimately to improve the quality of patient care. So it's just a great place to be. What I'm motivated by is to work in an industry where the goal is to improve the quality of lives of patients. It's just a very fulfilling industry to be in. And I think what inspires me the most is to be able to work alongside my peers in the UK and really focus on developing innovative medicines, ensuring that patients have access to those medicines, and working around ways to be more collaborative with the NHS, with our healthcare professionals, because ultimately I do believe medicines are part of the solution. And what are you hoping to achieve during your tenure at the ABPI? So I have three priorities. I think the first one with the ABPI is to really bring people together and focus on leading the pricing negotiations. So I want to ensure that we are actively participating in the discussions. I want to ensure that we focus on what's really important, which is ultimately a fair price, ultimately uh, reward for innovation and to continue to be able to focus on R&D so we can develop the next set of innovation within the UK. And those things are critical. Uh, the second thing to me would be to look at finding ways to improve access of our medicines for patients. Because when you think about it, we are so good at discovering and developing innovative medicines in the UK. Where we're not as good is to ensure that patients actually benefit from those innovations. And then the third thing for me would be to focus on finding ways to create better partnerships, joint workings, working more collaboratively with the NHS, with healthcare providers, because ultimately I do believe that it's through working collaboratively with the ultimate goal of improving patient care and that medicines are being thought of as part of the solution, it will allow us to get there. If you look at your career so far, what unique experience would you say you bring that will help shape your role at the ABPI? Well, Paul, I'm very fortunate. I've, I have over 24 years of experience in the industry. It's with MSD, which is known as Merck in the United States, but it's a, a wide variety of different roles. I was a sales representative, I was in marketing, I worked in market access, I worked on early stage products, late stage products, I worked on products that were approaching LOE, I've worked within the global head office, I've worked within the US office, and then two and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to be able to come back to the UK and head up uh, MSD UK. At that time, I also had the benefit of working through the merger of Merck and Sharing Plow. So I have a lot of work across with the integration. At that time, I also had the opportunity to be a board member for the ABPI, as well as the chair of the APG, which is the American Pharmaceutical Group. So all of those different experiences give me a, a broad understanding of the industry, the complexities of the industry, the importance of R&D, the importance that the industry has within the UK PLC, the importance that it has to improve patient care, the importance that it has to work collaboratively with our other stakeholders. So I think I'm uh, well positioned with these broad experiences to really help the ABPI move forward in the right way over the next couple of years. It's obviously going to keep you very busy, so how are you going to balance your time between the role at MSD and the ABPI? That's a really good question. There is no doubt that uh, there's going to be significant pressures on my time between, on the one hand, running MSD in the UK, and on the other hand, uh, being the president of the ABPI. For me, there's a few principles that I have to apply. Number one is just prioritization. I, I have to learn to say no to things that are not critical, that are not of high importance for both jobs. Two is that you need to be able to have the right leadership team underneath you. And in MSD UK, I've got a very strong leadership team, and I'm very fortunate. At the ABPI, we've got a strong, strong leadership team, and we've got great leaders uh, with Stephen Whitehead, our CEO. So you've got the right support and leadership underneath you to be able to, be able to manage both jobs. 
The third thing is I've got great support from Merck. Merck really understands the importance of leading the ABPI, the importance of the changes in the UK and what it means globally to the industry. So I've got great support from my head office, which is also very helpful. And ultimately, uh, the energy comes from the fact that this is just something that I love to do. The ability to actually work to improve the quality of life of patients in the UK is just very, very fulfilling. When I think personally my own relatives, it's the industry, the pharmaceutical industry, that allows my mom to walk better due to her arthritis. It allows my dad's blood pressure and cholesterol to be under control. It allows my son to be able to better control his allergies. And I'm very grateful to the industry and very grateful that the industry is allowed to be able to give back to the many patients in the UK that have benefited. So I'm very excited. Now, one of your key activities this year will be leading on the drug pricing negotiations. So how do you think we achieve a fair balance between obviously commercial return for pharma and fair value for the NHS? It's about understanding what is the definition of value. What does that mean for the NHS? What does it mean for the industry? What does it mean for patients? What's the right thing to do for patients? Where I think there is common ground is the belief that if we can broaden the definition of value, improve access of innovative medicines in this country, and ensure that the right patients can have access to the right medicines at the right time, that I believe is a joint definition of value that we all need to aspire towards. For the ABPI, what's critically important for me is to ensure that we represent the interest of all members, whether it's the small startup companies, the medium-sized companies, the large pharmaceutical companies, and that we are adequately prepared and are part of the negotiations of the upcoming pricing scheme. We're also facing increasing globalization, not just for pharma, but for many industries. So if we look at pharma, both research-wise and commercially, how do we keep the UK as a competitive environment? Well, you know, historically, the UK has provided an excellent research and development platform. As a matter of fact, about 20% of the top 100 medicines have actually been invented here in the UK. So we are very, very proud of our heritage. We've got great scientific excellence, a good environment to conduct clinical trials. The challenge is, although we are great at developing and inventing some of the innovations here in this country, we don't do a great job of providing access to those innovative medicines to our patients. When you take a look at how the UK stacks up relative to our peers in Europe, we're actually much lower in terms of providing access for innovation. So I think in the future, what we need to do is continue to focus on the elements that we have that are very strong, such as our science base, such as our um, ability to conduct clinical trials, but also focus on the areas that we need to improve, which is to allow those innovations to be made available to patients within this country. Now, I'm very pleased with many of the uh, government's actions to date. Things such as the patent box, R&D tax credits, as well as the Innovation Health and Wealth Review are all agenda items that are very supportive of the industry and they're moving in the right direction. What we need to do now is continue to work collaboratively with the NHS, with the government, with other stakeholders to make sure that we can really focus on being able to ensure the adoption of that innovation moving forward. If we step back and look at the broader issues facing pharma, there's obviously a lot of reputational work that needs to be done to restore trust between the industry, healthcare providers, and indeed patients. What do you think pharma needs to do to adapt and address some of those issues? Paul, I think you're absolutely right. We need to improve the trust between the industry and multiple stakeholders, the NHS, patients, the public. And to do that, there's a few things that need to happen. The first thing that we're doing is we're doing broad outreach about the value of the industry, the value of the industry in improving patient care, the value of the industry to the economy, to UKPLC, the value of the industry to the NHS. The second thing that we need to do is really understand how do we need to work differently. So the ABPI is part of the Ethical Standards in Health and Life Sciences Group, which includes industry representation, members from the Royal Colleges, as well as other healthcare practitioners. And the goal is to find out how do we work differently to be able to collaborate better with the ultimate goal of improving patient care. It is a priority for me, a priority for the ABPI, to improve 
the trust between the industry as well as all the stakeholders that we interact with, whether it's the NHS, whether it's physicians, healthcare providers, patients, and the public. Deepak, thank you very much for speaking with me and good luck with both roles moving forwards. Thank you, Paul. It was a pleasure to speak with you.